just one more thing, Philmar. <sighs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? You always had good instincts. You know, I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman, even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves, and don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. You're welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The Roaster Coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is... Uh, he is... Uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um... <clears throat> We, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's, a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter, but to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. Listen, detective. If you want to know something, play Zach straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course, but the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Featherland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Look, Detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question then. 
I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Huh. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should feel honored, butt jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Uh... Tell me, hey Breath, have you seen Natasha tonight? Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about, let's see, five dollars maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. Gentlemen, your drinks. Yeah, uh, sorry, but we have to run. Uh, thanks anyway, Bojack. Ugh, my name is not Bojack. Yeah, I tip you, pal, but I don't have any change, so... <sniffs> sure, sir. The Tsar welcomes you back anytime. Sounds good, Bojack. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Uh, that girl is looking at me. She's just looking at anyone whose glass is empty, Marty. That's all. Uh, no, 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 Sonny. She was staring at me, like, hard. Now, I saw it. Marty, you're imagining things. Oh, wait a second. You see that, right? She's looking right at us with those big, black, weird squirrel eyes. Okay, Marty, don't panic. And just look elsewhere and walk away slowly. Creepy little squirrel girl. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet.
How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Why didn't you just call the police? Huh? Why? What would have been the use of that? A few messages aren't enough for a case. You should know that. Harassment makes for a case. So do threats. Who are you trying to convince, Sonny? Huh? They would have laughed in my face. Anyway, you know, the police station. Once I set foot in there, eh, I'm not coming out again. Your lawyers are too good for that, Eben. Yeah, I guess you're right, chicken. Do you really think we're that stupid? What? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. You're evasive, and try to make us believe you don't care about the threats. But from my experience, that kind of behavior has guilt stamped all over it. Yeah, I don't have to listen to this anymore. I hope you don't take offense, but get the hell out of the club while I'm asking nicely. Easy, Wessler. Let's talk about something else. I'd be very happy about that. Why would anyone have reason to blackmail your girlfriend? I don't know, uh, maybe because she's my girlfriend? You think that's enough? It's plenty enough. Good point. Oh, are you finally getting to a point? Or do you really want to dig around in my private life? Because, uh, people who do that end up in the alley, if you catch my drift. Very much so, Mr. Wessler. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Do you spend a lot of your time here? That's a strange question, you know. Humor me. Of course I spend a lot of time here. I'm here every time Natasha performs. Sadly, yeah, it's getting rarer. Is it compatible with your other businesses? Huh? What? Writing threatening messages and hiding them? I didn't say that. You're sly for a foul fiddle end, but... This ain't your territory, is it? I guess not, Mr. Wessler. Business going well, Mr. Wessler? Eh, depends on which one. Real estate, catering, charity, protection, extortion, bribing cops, contraband, the usual. Funny guy. How are the casinos? Fine, thank you. Yeah, gambling has always been a good business. Luck is expensive around here. <laughs> Damn, if only I knew that. I heard gambling was illegal. And I've heard you're not on the force at the moment. Then it seems we have a fair fight. On uneven ground, Mr. Featherland. I'm not sure I'd stand on it for long if I were you. That was candid. Yeah. I try to be clear. Is everything all right between you and Natasha? Yeah, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> Understandable, I guess. Naturally, our relationship is stable and perfect. I'm the setting, she's the gemstone. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I rarely hear such poetry, but uh, I understand exactly what you mean, Mr. Wessler. So, you have your answer. No recent friction? Hm. Wouldn't you like to know? It would make my job easier. Yeah, it would only lead you astray. So be glad that I tell you no. 
no friction. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the millions back then. <laughs> she was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Mm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. Is she completely alone when she's there at the weekend? As I've told you, Natasha's a free woman, eh? She's an adult. She doesn't need an escort. Or, uh, she didn't need one until now. Are you afraid for her? You know, a big star like her, alone in that house? I never said a black car doesn't drive by two or three times a day, but, uh, it's just caution. Huh. I'm not a monster after all, am I? I suppose not. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh... In our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Hmm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon.
Sonny. Sonny. That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Uh, forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. You were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey! I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. A sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me, like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop. And a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. I bet you spend a lot of your time staring into the mirror. Do you even recognize yourself? Maybe you were trying to be rude, but you know, that's a very good question. I was just trying to be rude. Oh, really? Well, then I'm sorry. Don't mention it. Gee, that is a, uh, unique picture. And kind of daring. I admit I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it before. Yes, I admit it's a little daring. I keep it. It evokes good memories. A precious old friend of mine. A most wonderful artist. He's got an eye, that's for sure, considering his model. Was that supposed to be some kind of compliment? I don't know. I don't compliment often. Not on purpose, anyway. Oh, you're funny. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. How do you like your bourbon, Mr. Featherland? In a glass. But thanks, I had a couple before I came. I feel like this may be a long night. 
I hope it doesn't bother you if I have one myself. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room. Yes. Look, Mr. Featherland. It's sunny. Saves us a lot of time. Okay, Sonny. So, why am I here? You know, men tend to babble in my presence. It must be exhausting. It is. But you're not the type to beat around the bush. Is it too banal if I tell you it's an occupational hazard? Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Oh, you do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, well, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. Natasha is a confident woman. I can exploit that. But I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. Sadly, I don't have the time, but the stage still calls my name, and I perform just a few times a year, and always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. The place is very elegant, and uh, so's your room. Why, thank you. I kind of feel like I'm in a museum. Well, that depends on the kind of museum. The kind with nice things. Oh. Suspiciously nice things, just like you. Do you think I'm suspicious? We'll see about that. Try me. Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threats? Those who admire me usually idolize me. No, I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. That's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see.
Why Deborah? She's a nice girl, but why didn't you come to me? Didn't you ask her the same thing already? I did, but I like to hear it from all sides. Hmm, well, since this whole thing started, I admit I'm not too keen on leaving my home. When I do, it's only with an escort. Ibn Wessler has nothing to do with this? Ibn has everything to do with me. Almost everything. But I didn't want to upset him with this. He thinks I'm overreacting. Deep behind the diamond skin lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. What was in those threats, exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So? You really don't have any idea? Which word could be used for a woman like me? I guess I do. Yes, I think I know what it could be. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking. And yes, that was in the message. That was printed on the paper and painted on my wall. In giant red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty. What about Filmar? Is he here because of you? Mr. Lowe helped me before, and yes, he was the first I approached. You've managed to curb my enthusiasm a little. Doesn't keeping two irons in the fire give me a better chance? But you don't have to worry. He didn't find anything. And he's not interested anymore, no matter how much I offer to pay him. Why? You'll have to ask him. I think I'll do that. A dark shadow from the past. An ex-lover. A husband, maybe. I'm surprised you asked that just now. Well, I have my habits. Some call my methods peculiar. What a curious way to put it. I'm a curious kind of fellow. So? I've never been married, and I don't really have any serious relationship before Hobart. A more dangerous, not serious relationship, maybe? I've never been with anyone long enough for them to hate me. Love is just another face of hate. So is hate a face of love, then? I guess. Were you on the run? No, Mr. Featherland. I came to Clawville with a clean slate. And I'd like to believe it will stay that way. You mean as the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler, the biggest mob boss in Clawville. Yeah, good luck with that. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. Let's stop beating about the bush. How do you know Molly? I'm prepared for that question, but it's still not easy. You knew very well that if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you, no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator, or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. 
Oh, really? How? Were you a nurse, too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? Uh, I, I did. I knew I checked you out before I sent Deborah. Luck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. What exactly do you want from me? You are really as good as they say you are. And I'm not selling lucky dips, Sonny. Find them, whoever they are, and... Whatever it takes? Not exactly, but something like that. You know, if I didn't see the speck of fear behind the confidence shining in your eyes, I wouldn't take the case. I'm not afraid. You're terrified, Natasha. Don't be ashamed. You must solve this. As soon as you can. Money's not an issue. Just one more thing, Sonny. Natasha? Please, come to 37 Rochester Street in Flower Town tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sonny, a woman is naked without her secrets. Hmm. I knew you would understand. Oh yeah, I understand everything. So, when do we meet? The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early, and don't be too late. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank you. Until later, Natasha. Goodbye, Sonny. Aren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was bored to tears, Sonny. I also thought maybe something happened to you. You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? You're such a fragile little thing. I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. Have you talked to Natasha? In fact, yes. She was, uh, kind of mysterious. I bet she was. You know, 
I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. What is it? The reason I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers stand on end. Ah, old croakers. You're safe while I'm here. Okay, okay, I didn't say anything. We stepped into it, didn't we? Of all that's furry, what kind of a list is this? Exactly. I have no idea, but I don't even want to find out. Those names, all top dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Keeping secrets? She's the secret herself. Thanks, Philmar. This could be important. Ah, uh, don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, oh, shut up, Marty. There's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work. It's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. Ah, uh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Let's take a look around before we go inside. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? 
Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. Aw, oh, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. What, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. It's the nothing. Uh, what was that? Eh, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Uh, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. Yep. But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures. She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city, but in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods! Fuck even! Yeah, it's her, Deborah, the girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what you wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was it sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or, she was already here, and something happened to her, too. Kidnapped, or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house. Search everything. The room's not trashed. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I have no idea, but it's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. The message. Here, too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah, and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but... Let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities, but we must find out where it's from. We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Five, 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 one, one, one. 
Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah, right. Does this fireplace seem as suspicious to you as it seems to me, Marty? Hmm. It looks like it's never been used. And the place has radiators in every room, meaning there's central heating. Then why the fireplace? For decoration? It's not like Natasha, and Ibn doesn't have enough money for that. But you're right. I don't think it's just for show. Does this fireplace see... Hmm. It looks like... And the place has radiators in every room, meaning there's central heating. Then why the fireplace? It's not like Natasha, and Ibn doesn't have enough money for that. But you're... Bravo PD, how can I help you? Uh, I found a corpse. A woman. She's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street, 37, Flowerville. Sir, please, would you repeat that? Rochester Street, 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry! Hurry! Like a pro. Yep, like I've done it before. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. Now let's get the hell out of here. Nice cup of coffee a la Zip, huh? We're not here for the coffee, Marty. Zip always knows more than what he lets on. It'd be worth interrogating the old trash panda. If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time. He'll never forgive us, Marty, but we helped him out of trouble so many times he's not gonna have any choice. I hope you're right, old bird. <laughs> 